Let's do this like Power Ranger style. So one, two, three. We'll just cheers, no cheers, and then and then pop the bottles. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. Cheers. Pop bottles. Woo! Uh. <laughs> I might have jammed yours on really hard. It's not coming <laughs> off. That's how you troll her. <laughs> I jammed yours on really hard. Oh man. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, there we go. That worked perfectly. <laughs> If you want to troll somebody when you're putting the, the thing on, jam it on and twist really, really hard. And then you have to like really push to let it go. <laughs> I figured that was going to happen. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Yes, sir. guys, I'm here with my good friend Matt Keto, aka Goku Flex on YouTube. His YouTube channel is in the info box below. He's uh, an awesome friend of mine, he has amazing physique. And now Matt, like myself, has pretty good arms. And by that, I don't mean to boast, I'm simply saying that we all have strengths and weaknesses. Both of us happen to have arms as one of our strengths by nature. So um, a lot of questions come to me all the time about how to get big arms. So today we're gonna to bring you through a random arm workout we did and uh, break down what we did. I wanna point out that I don't really train arms too directly anymore. Obviously my triceps get hammered through powerlifting, but I barely focus on arms anymore. But today I stepped back into my bodybuilding days and we actually went and had an arm day. And I do wanna point out first and foremost that when I was focusing on building my arms up, I would give them their own day. Fridays were my biceps and triceps day. Mm -hmm. And it would totally be okay to hit arms twice in a week. Especially when you're natural, uh, higher frequency is better. So you can train arms twice a week, keep it short, sweet, and heavy. Before we even get into the video, I wanna say my number one method for training arms is to treat them like you would your chest or back. Everybody likes going heavy, they dip into low reps for chest and back and legs, mm -hmm. but for some reason a lot of people are afraid to do that for arms. They keep it real high reps, lightweight, and that's not the way to go. You need to overload your arms and make them grow. So yeah. I usually do three exercises for biceps, three exercises for triceps, mm -hmm. and today that's exactly what we did. So we began with a, a close, close grip, grip press. Yep, we started with close grip bench press. And close grip bench press is probably one of my favorites for triceps. For me, I have tricep tendonitis. How I got tricep tendonitis was doing heavy skull crushes when I was younger. But yeah, we started with close grip bench press. Like I said, probably one of my favorites. Absolutely triceps. one of my favorites. You can go really heavy in it, which allows you to really overload the mm -hmm. muscle, which is going to lead to muscle hypertrophy yep. and make it grow. Um, honestly, the close grip bench is probably the godfather of all tricep movements. That and dips. Uh, Weighted dips. But tricep close grip press is probably a little bit safer than dips for your shoulders. Mm -hmm. And it just really allows you to build up the strength for your overall bench press in general. And it allows you to build that size for your triceps like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and again, like Matt said, skull crushers are one of my favorites, but it is a lot more range of motion for your elbows and it can cause elbow issues. I have no problem doing them, but again, you have to base it on yourself. Exactly. So for, for rep ranges for close grip, I like going pretty heavy, honestly. Um, a lot of workouts, I'll start maybe 10 reps for my first set and then maybe do two sets of eight. But some workouts, I'll do sets of 10, a set of eight, and maybe a set of six. Mm -hmm. um, today, I went down to a set of six, and I didn't go particularly heavy, but uh, just to kind of demonstrate the different rep ranges, I think I went up to like 275 for like an easy five or six. Mm -hmm. The reason why we started with triceps is on arm days, you typically want to start with the bigger muscle. Okay? Just like um, on leg days, you don't really start with, I don't know, calves. Yeah. <laughs> I guess some people do. If your calves are lacking, some people do. Or you're not going to start with like forearms. You know, on arm days. Yeah. Before you, forearms is usually a finisher move. So b the reason why we start triceps before biceps is because triceps are, are the bigger muscle. The triceps take up what seventy percent of your arm. Yeah, so around that. Like a large portion of your arm. 60, 60, 70 percent. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I do want to point out. I don't think it's something to really overthink. Which one you start off with. Um, also, another way to go about it too is whatever one your weak one is, you can start off with that. So mm -hmm. if your biceps are a real lagging point, then you might want to actually flip that. And you might want to start off with your yeah. biceps just because you'll be absolutely fresh with full 100% energy exactly. in the tank and you can give that all to your first exercise of biceps. Mm -hmm. um, so don't overthink it, but you know, in general, people do tend to start off with a bigger exercise. We like to alternate. I'll do a, a tricep movement, I'll finish all three sets of my triceps, then I'll move on to biceps. Mm -hmm. Do all three sets of that, then back to triceps. It doesn't really make a difference, but I feel like that at least allows you to disperse your energy onto both of them equally yeah. rather than burning yourself out with three exercises of triceps exactly. and then being tired for three exercises. Of biceps. Exactly. 
I think if you have like lagging biceps, then maybe start off with biceps and do all three exercises and yep. then move on to triceps. Absolutely. That is Then we moved on to uh, dumbbell bicep curls. Dumbbell bicep curls. Now these you can alternate with uh, barbell curls. I personally love barbell curls. Matt said he has one arm that's stronger than the other. So he moved on to dumbbell curls, which is actually very, very important. A lot of people ask me, Nick, I have uh, one bicep is a little bit smaller than the other. One side's a little bit weaker than the other. How do I fix that? Doing isola uh, isolated movements, per side is great for that. If you're doing a barbell curl, there is a chance that you could be pulling with one side more than the other. So if you go to dumbbells, each arm is forced to put in the exact amount of work. And what I recommend doing is starting off with your first hand, because that's your strongest hand. Um, excuse weak, excuse me, short, hand. Start, off, start off with your strongest hand is what I was trying to say. Start off with your stronger hand, because that's gonna set the bar for your weaker hand. So if you do 10 with your strong hand, then you have to do 10 with your weak hand. Really, I always thought the opposite, to be honest. I always start with my weaker hand, which is why I always start with my right hand. Really? Yeah, and I think my right hand got stronger eventually. Because yeah, well, that's <laughs> totally backwards, but that, there you go. So that's what I was saying, there's different ways to go about it. But uh, yeah, that, those are two different methods right there then. So again, play with it, find out which one works for you. I always like setting the bar with my strong one, and that forces my weak one to have to catch up to it. But Matt looked at the opposite way. But uh, regardless, you know, doing one arm at a time is what's going to help fix that balance. Um, another difference you saw us in this video doing is uh, Matt alternate, oh, was doing alternate curls. So he'd curl one side, then curl the mm -hmm. other side, then the other side. I would curl one hand all at one time. Mm -hmm. The reason I do this is because I feel it keeps more time under tension going yeah. for that bicep. And time under tension is everything. Yeah. Um, and I prefer the alternating just because you can go heavier. Yeah. Um, one of the perks to have doing barbell curls is obviously the amount of weight you can do, mm -hmm. right? I think if you have to choose one or the other, barbell or whatever one that you can do more weight on is going to win every time. Um, for me, since I always feel like I'm pulling more on my left hand, um, even though I've been doing this for 10 years, <laughs> it's the only exercise where I feel like um, I favor one arm more than the other. Right, right. Which is why I like doing alternate dumbbell curls and I like to go heavy as possible. Yep. And uh, another thing I want to add is <clears throat> don't be afraid to cheat a little. When I like do my dumbbell curls, I bend my knees a little bit. So in fact, when I'm doing the curl, I'm actually using my legs yes. to cheat instead of using your lower back. Yep. So exactly. Keep the glutes tight. And yeah, I can't express that enough. I could not agree more with you. The, the, adding a little bit of a cheat in there is honestly essential. As long as it's a controlled, safe cheat. You're not just throwing it up recklessly. Mm -hmm. um, I can't stress that enough, man. I actually... I, it's unfortunate when I see so many people um, being form Nazis specifically with curls mm -hmm. because in my opinion that's just going to hold you back. Again, the muscle overload is everything and really if you look at a lot of bodybuilders who are performing controlled safe cheek curls and if you look at the actual motion going on in the upper arm, mm -hmm. there's still a full contraction and oh, stretch yeah. going on in the bicep. You're not taking away from the bicep much at all. You're just simply allowing for that much more weight. Mm -hmm. And also with the, with the biceps, because they're a smaller muscle, I mean, it's the, the, the squeeze at the very top and that negative on the way back down yeah. is what's really going to be That's important. one thing I want to point out is even though you're cheating to get the bar up, the bar, the weight up, Make sure that you keep your palm up and you just let it down and yeah. you feel that contraction. Slow negatives yep, are key for biceps. That's yep. why cheat curls are okay because you're not cheating on the way down. Yep. Um, and like Matt said with the palm up, he means supinate the wrists. So yep. basically you're taking your pinkies and you're twisting them up towards the ceiling and that's going to allow you to activate biceps a lot. Lots of people when they do cheat curls, you see them just drop the weight as they come. Yeah. And they'll be like headbanging all over the yep. place. So today, <laughs> we, the weight. for reps, again, it can vary. Some days I'll just do sets of 10 and 12 and 8 maybe. Some days I like going down to 6 and even sometimes 4. And that sounds kind of ridiculous, but again, it's just like any other muscle. I don't do that often, but once in a while I go down to like 4 to 6 reps. And it really overloads the muscle. And you feel it. It's sore as hell the next day. I like the 5 rep range, yeah. personally. And, and today I did that with uh, the 65-pound dumbbells, which is actually really <laughs> stupid because I used to do those for like clean sets of 6. And I thought that was how it was going to be today. And I can't remember the last time I've done dumbbell curls. So it, it, they felt like 80s. It didn't go well for me. But oh well, I'm going to up to now anyway. I quit. <laughs> uh, after the, that, we moved on to, what do we do for triceps next? Dips. We did dips. Dips. Dips are probably my favorite exercise for triceps next to uh, close grip. Yep. In fact, the only reason I put close grip above dips is simply because uh, they're slightly safer for your shoulders. Mm -hmm. Dips do put your shoulders a little bit more at risk, so you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two ways to do dips. There's one with uh, 
crossing your legs behind you and sticking them way out behind you, so you're kind of leaning forward, mm -hmm. and you get you flare your elbows out a little bit. And this is to really work the chest. This will be like an extreme decline press for your chest. Mm -hmm. Of course, your tricep gets worked in there as well. The way we did it is we kept our feet pretty straight down below us, so we were very upright, and we kept our elbows tucked in close towards our sides, and that's a lot more focus on the, on the triceps than it is yeah. the chest. Just to isolate a little bit more. Also, you can do weighted dips. It really depends. Yeah, it does. If you're fresh, weighted dips are great. Yeah. Um, but if if you don't want to do weighted dips, you can save them for the end of a workout and just do a bunch of body weight dips, which of course is going to be safer for your wrists and shoulders anyway. So mm -hmm. personally, I put Skull Crushers third in that list. Those are my three oh, definitely. favorite. Definitely. Um, but again, you know, if you have elbow issues, and I have had elbow issues, so I, I know what it's like. You know, got to roll with what you can do. So after that, we did uh, just a hammer strength. Preacher curl for biceps, yeah. and um, notice how we did the preacher curl though. We did it. I call them prayer curls because um, they kind of look like you're praying. Yeah. Your knees are kind of towards the ground. Yeah. But we're not sitting on the seat and really isolating. We're kind of tucked more back just to get a uh, better stretch at yes. the bottom. Yep. You by pulling your body back, you're dropping your shoulders down low. Exactly. The weight's holding your wrist down still, and it's going to extend your arm completely straight, giving you yeah. a much better stretch. Uh, again, pretty heavy on those. We did sets of eight to ten. Yep. And we didn't go super low. You don't need to go low on every single workout. I like to go kind of low, heavy uh, on one bicep workout, and the rest can be moderate. Yeah. So for my arm workouts, typically I like to go heavy on the first compound movement, like sets of five. I usually don't like to go to under five. You like yeah. to go under five, right? Oh, rarely. 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 Okay. okay. Regular. Regular would be actually no more than six usually. Okay, so five eight to six, and then. Second exercise, I'll go anywhere between eight and twelve, maybe. Yep. So, and one quick little thing to point out about the preacher curls: there's a lot of like that old saying that the preacher curls build the peak. Um, that's not true. You can't build a peak. That's genetic shape. Mm -hmm. um, they simply, they really do a good job at isolating the bicep. Yeah. And obviously, if you grow your bicep, if you have a peak, it's only going to get bigger. So. Yeah. That's it, man. Then we moved on to rope push downs to yeah. show what we normally do. And actually, guys, I prefer to start off my tricep workout with the rope push downs, but the ropes were taken so we couldn't do them first. But normally I like, I like if your goal is just bodybuilding and it's not strength, I like warming up with the ropes first because you can start nice and light, it's a smooth range of motion, and no, it really helps too. you just lubricate your elbows and your joints and me warm too. everything up nicely. But we did them at the end today. I either do them beginning or the end though. Um, so at the end we went pretty hard on them. You see that uh, we both focus on a very slow negative. You, see, you might notice that I focus a little bit more on a fast explosion on the way down, and that's simply for powerlifting. Mm -hmm. I try to emulate the same way I would bench press real fast. Yeah. You know, yeah. And that's just that's just different goals, but. It's be explosive. And then Matt showed me um, a kickback with a cable. Now, kickback's an old exercise. I've done it a million times, but I never tried it with a cable before. Yeah. You don't use a handle. You grab it by the ball, and it feels amazing. This Ten times some... better than a dumbbell. Yeah, this is something that gets a lot of hate on because it's a girly exercise. And to be honest, I haven't done it in a while. But out of pretty much every tricep exercise, I always get the best contraction on the tricep kickbacks. It yep. feels like my long head is just gonna like fall off. Oh yeah, <laughs> it feels amazing. Like you're just gonna squeeze and pop it off. Feels amazing. Yeah. So, and also one thing to note with triceps when it comes to uh, the different positions, any movement that's kind of in front of your body. So, uh, you know, like- Press uh, downs. Kevin push downs, yep. Um, Skull crushers, as long as it's flat skull crushers, mm -hmm. those are gonna target the, the outer head a lot more. Mm -hmm. Versus anything that's over your head, so like you know, like dumbbell extensions, uh, seated uh, barbell extensions, mm -hmm. those are gonna target a lot, target a lot more of the, the inner head. Yeah. Um, but again, there's nothing to really overthink. If if you're smashing it hard, you're gonna hit all three heads of the tricep. That the third head obviously is underneath both of them, and you can't really see it. And this is also why the the close grip and the dips and the skull crushers are my favorite exercises because they do specifically the close grip and the dips they do a great job of just smashing all three heads very yeah. evenly yeah so no i agree yeah but just that's just a little tip <laughs> skull like for me like my outer head's my weak point so i might want to focus a little more on you know movements that are in front of my body mm -hmm. all right so this was always honestly this this was my freaking key to success when it came to building big arms. At the end, <laughs> you forgot your key. At the end of every, <laughs> it's been a while. At the end of every single bicep workout, I was doing pinwheel curls slash hammer curls. It's optional. You'll see Matt did regular hammer curls, which are just out in front of you. I did pinwheel curls, which are hammer curls simply tilted in, so your fist is like against your body. Yeah. And uh, this really smashes the outer head of your your bicep. 
hits the brachialis nice. Yeah. Obviously, you get some forearm work in there. Oh, this exactly. blasted my arm size like crazy. And on this, I love going heavy, really heavy. Sets of six. I would do three sets of six usually. Typically, for my arm workouts, the last exercise, I like going anywhere from 15 to 20. That's just my personal preference to hit every, to hit the entire rep range. I don't think anything over 20 is really, no, I don't no, like going over not. 20, but I think 20 has a time and place. Yep. And with arms, I like it. Um, for me, when I do my hammer curls, I kind of bring my thumb up to my anterior delt or my friend's shoulder. So I don't, kind of, I don't do pinwheel curls, but I like to bring it right up here. And I like the way it hits your forearms a little bit more Absol too. Oh yeah, it definitely hits your forearms, honestly. Yeah. So that's it guys, as you can see, um, we agree on a lot of the same things. And we have different preferences for a lot of things. Exactly. So there are no absolutes with training. You have to play with it and find out what works for you. Mm -hmm. But uh, hopefully this helps you out a little bit, at least threw some ideas your way. And again, subscribe to Matt Keto. His channel is in the info box below. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. And remember, motivate, appreciate, dedicate, and elevate. Made. Oh, angling me. <laughs> There's not even any light here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> look like Frosty the Snowman. Why I, I always know. look like Frosty the Snowman, but... <laughs>